He may be the most storied inventor of all time. There are numerous facts and theories ranging from death rays to free energy to aliens. Today we continue our Persons of Intrigue Month by attempting to dissect the truth behind the fascinating life of Nikola Tesla. This is Red Web. Welcome back, Task Force, to another episode on yet another intriguing, mysterious person from our past, our history of this world. I am your resident mystery enthusiast each week, uncovering a new topic, Trevor Collins. And joining me, hearing these mysteries for the very first time, bringing that gut instinct, his psychic abilities that he knows he has, Alfredo Diaz. This may be a dumb question, Mm -hmm. but is the, like, Tesla, like Elon Musk Tesla, is that like named because it was inspired? Yes, I imagine so. Okay, all right, I'm like, just this checking. Is, this is the famous Tesla. Yeah. I put a T at the end of famous. Fam- you did. Maybe it's oh, because, because he's you, the you're most. You're eager to say Tesla. That's yeah, why. yeah, yeah. I don't know any other Tesla, but that's just me. Yeah, so I, I don't know. I was always like, is that inspired by like Nikola yeah, Tesla? absolutely. Because he was he was the mastermind of electricity and alternating mm-hmm. current. Yeah, so, so that's what I thought. I was like, man, it just seems like it's just the one-to-one connection here. Yeah. But I was like, maybe that's no question. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, that's, you are exactly right on. Also, the, the you know, the electric company, is mm-hmm. it Tesla or Tesla? Oh, see, now that gets into whatever your kind of regional accent might be. Yeah. Because I think it is Tesla, but just the accent. Yeah. My, my, like my girlfriend's from Canada. Mm-hmm. And so her S's tend to sound a little more Z-like. Interesting. And so she says Tesla. Ah. So depending on like where you are in the country, you say Ni- Nikola Tesla. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. But I say Tesla. Same. With a nice soft S. But now the, the thing is with this particular person, each different mysterious person has their own theories and stories behind them. We're going to give you all the necessary background around Nikola Tesla so that way we can describe and discuss the theories. There's so much more detail, right? We're not a biographical podcast. I want to jump into the deets, the juicy deets about that death ray, the free energy, the aliens, all that stuff. But to get there, there is some element of background you need around Nikola Tesla as well as what happened in his life so that way you have some understanding, some groundwork to work with, right? Fredo, how much do you know about Nikola Tesla? It just, uh, he was an inventor. Mm Mm-hmm. And um, when it came to electricity, it was just like a big thing that he did. He was able to produce a lot of like interesting gadgets and trinkets that kind of amazed people. Yeah. Um, And he even got to the point where he did it so well, so consistently that some people feared him. There was a lot of a lot of that fear Mm -hmm. and misunderstanding with how advanced some of his his ideas were. But yeah, there was a lot of fear and a lot of misunderstanding with his otherwise brilliance. And we're going to talk and see a lot about that. And before we get started, there's a lot of different topics we're going to talk about. And some of the topics include mental illness, death, child death, animal harm, and xenophobia. But let me take you back. July 10th, 1856, Nikola Tesla was born the fourth of five children in the Austrian Empire in modern day Croatia. That's just how far back it was. I honestly forgot that it was in the mid 1800s that he was born. Jeez. Yeah. He lived to a, a ripe old age. And a lot of that kind of comes in the early 1900s. Now, his father was an Eastern Orthodox priest. While his mother never actually received an education, she was considered highly intelligent and was known to craft her own tools and memorize poems. She was very well read. Reportedly, Tesla was also considered extremely intelligent, even as a child. When he was 19, Tesla began studying math and physics at the Polytechnic Institute at Graz in Austria. It's said that he gambled his money away and was forced to drop out of school during his third year, but this is unconfirmed. Again, as you know, Task Force, Fredo, oh, yeah. the chair, Christian, you're here. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of gaps when we look back in history. A lot of... Further back you go, the mm-hmm. bigger the gaps. Absolutely. Everything gets lost to time. Absolutely. None of that tangible stuff. No. You got to think, though, the the rate of like information retained is probably significantly higher and will continue to stay at a significantly high rate because of technology. I hope so. You know, you know, an EMP comes through though. That's true. Wipes out my student debt. That wouldn't be too bad. (laughs) 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 But you're right. I mean, I I hope that history uh, is a little bit more permanent moving forward, right? Yeah. fewer, Fewer things lost to time. Now, Instead of math and physics, Tesla grew more interested in electricity in particular and felt there were design flaws and inefficiencies using direct currents, aka DC, shown by his professors. 
At this point in 1881, Tesla went to Budapest to work at a telephone company. You can see now how we're laying the groundwork for communications, transmission, and electricity are kind of the cornerstone of his inventions and his interests. Here in Budapest, he began to visualize solutions to problems in electrical engineering and direct currents that would eventually lead to the development of alternating currents, or AC. The story goes that Tesla got a vision of an AC motor while on a walk and meditating in the park, and he began drawing his designs actually in the dirt with a stick. This was not the first time that he had one of these so-called visions, and it is said that Tesla could perfectly see his designs in his mind's eye. I'm talking like, when he envisioned something, he would see it manifest physically in front of him. That is interesting. Oh, yeah. I mean, I'd also be a little scared if I'm able to, like, visually imagine something with that much strength. Yeah, dude. Absolutely. That, that, that's not a normal thing. No, you're exactly right. And he actually expresses his disposition on that in an interview that was published in American Magazine in 1921. He actually described how these visions began to largely negatively affect him a little bit before he was able to properly use them. It was something that he had to kind of get acclimated with, but here's what he said, quote, during my boyhood, I suffered from a peculiar affliction due to the appearance of images, which were often accompanied by strong flashes of light. When a word was spoken, the image of the object designated would present itself so vividly in my vision that I could not tell whether what I saw was real or not. Even though I reached out and passed my hand through it, the image would remain fixed in space. So basically he was kind of terrified of this thing and, and he couldn't tell if it was real or not until he got used to it. But even though he would reach and touch it and pass through yeah. it, he was still like from an early age, he had a very peculiar, unique, brilliant mind. And again, we're laying the groundwork yeah. for where we're about to go. I mean, if that were to happen to me, I would seek medical help just to make sure it's not like an illness that I'm suffering from, maybe like a tumor in my brain that's pressing up against a certain part of it sure. to, to cause these images. Because it's just not something that is normal and that is a thing that everyone experiences. And so, you know, more like a lot of times things like this happen is because there's something like different right. with your body. You could have yeah, anatomy. something physically different, yeah. physically mm -hmm. out of place. Even. Yeah. And you want to just you know, it's be you know, good to make sure that's like, yeah. oh, that's not something that's detrimental to my health. Absolutely. Or it could just be a wiring thing. Sometimes True. people have different abilities. Yeah. To, you know, like, I would just be wa curious and wanting to know immediately. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Like synesthesia, I think. Is that what it's called? When you can oh. uh, see sounds. Like you see colors when you see certain or when you hear certain notes. There are Wait, what? Yeah, dude. Yeah, it's just a general, uh, I don't even know how, what you would describe it as, but it basically it's sensory, kind of like a, another sense or a combination or like, of senses yeah like your senses are interpreted differently so yeah like mm -hmm. people will taste words or see sounds things like that yeah oh. they'll, they'll say like an e chord is a beautiful pink note and and you know a lot of these folks are have actually come together to talk about their different like what do you see this note as and it's it's a very rare condition but Wow. Suffice to say that sometimes our brains are wired in such unique ways. It doesn't yeah. mean that something's wrong. It's just... No, not at all. But to your point, I in a modern science world, I would agree. I would want to kind of diagnose it and see mm -hmm. what's going on because it could be an underlying physical issue. However, in the mid-1800s, you got to think you could have all sorts of monstrous things applied to you. A thousand percent. You know, you could end up being hospitalized or taken away or, or feared by society because it's something that is not fully understood yet. Yep. You know? But I'm with you, 100%. Mm -hmm. So, interestingly, and again, this is where we're trying to understand maybe where these visions began, because it wasn't that these were always the case. Though he had a long history with them, these visions seemed to begin somewhere in his childhood. That's when he noted them kind of taking on. Now, some sources tend to indicate that these visions began near or just soon after the tragic death of his older brother, Dane, who he actually was there to witness during a horse riding accident. Oh no. Oh yes, a very traumatic event. Now, whether this had an impact on Tesla or not, he was said to have a photographic memory, though these visuals could have been spurred on by the tragic event, basically saying that, you know, we're not trying to diagnose it here, but we're saying that there could be a correlation between this event and his innate photographic memory that afterwards this vision's ability kind of arose. Yeah. Now, coming back to the idea of AC versus DC current, electricity alternates directions in its natural state, and direct current, which maintains its direction, can be very dangerous 
and also loses its strength over distances. When you're transmitting it from, you know, a generator or whatever to a household, you would want to make sure it maintains a strength along the way. Mm -hmm. As we know now, we use alternating currents because of the many different benefits it has, but at this time, we're about to witness decades worth of effort trying to swap from a dangerous DC current world to an alternating current world. And if you're confused by all of that, I just want to keep it simple. Envision the flow of water. Direct current would be akin to a steady stream moving in one direction, whereas alternating current would be just that, the flow back and forth of that stream. And if you've ever seen um, with regard to lights or electricity or anything like that, 50 or 60 hertz, Hertz yeah, yep. is, is a unit that's one over second. For example, Hertz would be 60 times per second. That's how often the current shifts back and forth. And so if you ever see in slow motion lights flickering or anything like that, you're kind of seeing the effects of alternating yeah. current. So later on in 1882, Tesla moved to Paris, France to work for the Continental Edison Company, where he helped install the incandescent lighting system. He eventually went on to begin designing dynamos and electrical generators for the Edison Company. A dynamo is a type of electrical generator that converts mechanical energy into electrical energy, specifically DC currents. All the while, Tesla continued to work on his AC generator idea and tried to get anyone who could listen to him to come see it, come see how it worked and understand that it could be a better way forward. Tesla's manager at the time was being relocated to the United States and actually asked that Tesla come with him. Soon thereafter, Tesla departed France and arrived in New York on June 6, 1884, bringing with him a letter of recommendation from that manager saying this, quote, My dear Edison, I know two great men, and you are one of them. The other is this young man. That is a monster Whoa. of a recommendation letter, huh? <laughs> Holy. Hey, Thomas Edison, you're pretty right. good. You're pretty goaded. How about this kid? The Thomas Edison. Yeah. That's wild. So Tesla worked for Thomas Edison and claimed in his memoir, that he was told that if he could approve upon Edison's direct current dynamos, that he himself would receive $50,000. I think this is the origin of the rivalry that we have come to know between Tesla and Edison. And we'll talk a little bit more about that supposed rivalry moving on, but- Wait, so Tesla actually worked for Edison? Yeah. And then eventually was so good that there was a rivalry? So there was a big rivalry between DC and AC. Oh, okay. Kind of like Blu-ray and what is it? Uh, exactly. DVD. <laughs> HD DVD. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but, but, but anything. It's like the rivalry between VHS and who? Right. <laughs> between cassette tape and what? <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. But he, in the end, never received any of this money, and he actually left Edison's company after only six months. Oh, wow. Yeah. Now, the validity of the story is debated, and historians believe that Tesla and Edison actually ended up on good terms since Tesla was able to keep his patents for discoveries that he made during his employment, which is highly rare, even in modern times. Very rare. So I would I would assume, yeah. I mean, I would follow that narrative, that string of they left on okay terms. Yeah. At least. So Edison, it seemed, was not interested in Tesla's alternating current technology and did not believe perhaps that Tesla's ideas were even practical. So it isn't as much as a business competition, at least not yet, as compared to a, okay, um, these are fantastic ideas that I don't think are gonna work, they're just ideas. Wow. Yeah. In 1886, Tesla worked at Peck and Brown where he built electric motors and was able to modify DC motors to be AC. The company actually assisted him in patenting the AC motor. This led him to working with George Westinghouse in 1888, where he tried to use his AC motors to power streetcars in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, with Westinghouse licensing Tesla's patents. We're talking about electric vehicles in 1888. I guess because the technology was just not quite there yet, but what? Damn, it took us so long to really start adopting electric vehicles then. Well, this is where in Task Force, there's a lot of you out there with the, the hive mind of knowledge. So feel free to step in and give give me that good juicy yeah. details. But from but my the understanding- The gas and oil companies are huge. That's though, it. And they got a lot of pull. There's a lot of lobbying happening. So at the turn of the century, there actually was, you know, vehicles, right? And to my understanding, there was a pretty good split between electric vehicles and gas powered vehicles. And it no was- way. Yeah. And it was mostly, at least in those early stages, due to lobbying by big oil companies, talking about the dangers of electricity, the eases and costs, benefits of gas-powered vehicles, that electric vehicles kind of got sidelined and batteries and other things of that nature kind of got stifled, which is why I would say maybe battery technology, while improved, has not been vastly 
improved yeah. upon in the last I mean, century. Ima- like, if that happened, like, imagine how much further battery technology would be mm-hmm. if we were working on it for for that much more, like, you know what I mean? If it was more of a priority for so much longer. Yeah. So oh, it's, man. I mean, so that's probably why Elon's sitting there going like, well, I'm, I'll name it Tesla after the guy who was brilliantly right, minded, yeah. talking about electricity, but also trying to take his brand new AC motors to power streetcars in the late 1880s. That's wild. So this eventually led to what was called the War of the Currents. This is where the versus kind of attitude came because now it's been proven. Now it's starting to enter the market and he's trying to convert people and their understanding to say, hey, here's the upside to AC, the downside of DC, et cetera, et cetera. I'll keep it kind of simple. But Edison and Westinghouse, they actually worked to discredit AC and DC respectively. The two of them kind of fighting back and forth to do that. At Westinghouse, Tesla was able to get his patents for inventions, but the competition between the two was just too fierce. And eventually Westinghouse was losing money because of a market crash that happened in London. So this is kind of an overseas battle as well. Oh, wow. And just because of what happened in London, Westinghouse loses funding. And this is what put that side of the equation behind a little bit. So eventually Westinghouse simply had to end his partnership with Tesla just to stay afloat because the company simply couldn't afford his contract. And Tesla was actually okay with this because he was never a person after money. He was only a person after ideas and Mm -hmm. and innovation. And so he just wanted to improve tech, not necessarily make a bunch of money, which kind of leads to a spoiler alert. He unfortunately passed away with very little to his name. He had- Really? He was, yeah, he was never well off and a lot of his projects- mm -hmm, A lot of his projects suffered or disappeared to time simply because he never just sought money he just he just wanted to work man i feel like it just could have been such a different i don't know like imagine if he stayed under edison and edison just believed in what he was yeah. doing and was given the funding like that, yes i feel like things could have gone so much further would be an, an incredible partnership it also feels like such a waste of a brilliant mind absolutely and i think that is what is so i would say bittersweet about tesla's story Damn. is that the ending is you know so sad you yeah. know, to think about, but also he's st- still so much of his invention impacted us to this day. But you think to your point, what could have been, right? You know, where would we have been as, as a society, right? It also makes you think that like, as brilliant as you can be at the end of the day, that you still need luck. You still need support, right? Because you can only go so far on your own. I feel like, yeah. Yeah. Right. I mean, Funding, money is king in in this world, you know? Yeah, you know, it is. It's made up, it's contrived, but it's what (laughs) everything runs on. Yeah. Now, I was actually surprised when I was reading through the outline that Jillian wrote here. It's like, I knew about this historic battle between AC versus DC, and so I'm thinking about this as like, you know, someone's lifelong battle, if you will. But eventually AC won out the War of the Currents in 1889, really not all that long later, not even a decade. Right, just a few short years when in 1889 the Edison Machine Works began using AC current. So it's also worth noting that Edison Machine Works, the company, was no longer run by Edison at this time. And maybe that is why they adopted the use of AC. Huh. It, it almost became a war of attrition. And it got down to a point, and now this I don't know the truth of this, but it got down to a point where Thomas Edison did a street demonstration to try to show how. DC actually wasn't dangerous and how it was actually safer than alternating current, which it isn't. I mean, yes, you could still get electrified both ways, but DC current is definitely going to damage your tissues. It's going to, it has arcing issues, all these other things. But I remember, and Christian, help me out. You might be able to Google this up, but I remember the demonstration where unfortunately like an elephant was, was like, okay, I don't even know if I want to keep going, but like used as a test subject to, let me just say, demonstrate the safety or lack thereof of the rival current system. Jesus. You know what I'm saying? I'm, yeah, I'm yeah, keeping yeah, it yeah, yeah. above we'll keep board. Keep it at that. But my but, God. Um, mm-hmm. yeah, it's the, it was an elephant named Topsy. There's a yeah. documentary uh, called Electrocuting an Elephant okay. from 1903 that details the story. All right, but coming back. Now, despite the war of the currents and contrary to popular belief, again, we talked about this, but Tesla and Edison may not have been rivals. In fact, it is now becoming popular opinion that they weren't. They had different approaches to business and technology, of course. Edison was more business-oriented, Tesla more idea-oriented. And actually, according to historical records, they even liked each other. As mentioned before, Tesla left Machine Works with his patents 
They were never stolen by Edison, which had kind of become part of the story. But to put a period on the end of the sentence, they kind of went on record complimenting each other publicly before it was all said and done. So that's kind of the general background of Nikola Tesla, trying to give you a baseline of where we're headed, some fun facts along the way. But now let's talk about his later life, opening the door to some of his inventions, which will lead us into the theories as to what I'm talking about when it comes to a death ray or free energy or even aliens. So with the leftover money from Westinghouse, Tesla continued to tinker with his ideas. I think, you know, we covered that pretty thoroughly. He's a man of ideas. While Tesla was in New York, he helped develop a lot of things. Let me blow your mind. He helped develop the X-ray. He created, obviously, the Tesla coil. It's named after him. And he even played around with the idea of wireless energy. And I'm not talking about putting your phone on a pad and it charges. I'm talking about wireless transmission of power. People are just built different, man. <laughs> they're just they're just built different. Like, wh how do you just, uh, uh, <laughs> you know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Damn, man. Yeah. How do you even? Oh yeah. How, like, what kind of resume is that? Right. That's absolutely wild. He's like, well, I dabbled with some motors, and you know, but then I helped invent X rays. Oh, by the way, I can power things from two hundred miles away. Right. It's just in, even like. Just the, the 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 whole mentality that people have when inventing things is mm -hmm. just absolutely mind blowing, and just and, and, and you know you can have someone that's creating so many amazing things like this, and then I also know there's like like the the person that made the program that all the hospitals have for or um when you like charge like pay for something oh, in the yeah, hospital, yeah, yeah. he gets mm -hmm. pennies. Are you serious? Pennies on that, but has but has the patent on it, and it's used. And every hospital, right? It's so ubiquitous. He just has millions. Oh my god! And it's just like he wasn't just like I'm gonna make this one thing that's gonna sell for a ton of money. He's like I'm gonna make this one thing that's used everywhere. I'm gonna yeah. own it and just get trickles. Hey, he goes, just, hey, just you can pennies. have it for free. Just pennies. Right? It's like and he just like space. and he just so many has so many pennies. He has millions. I'm like that's wild to me. Just the entrepreneurship that people have and they build it, just kind of build stuff. Like damn. Yeah, dude. Wow, that's insane. I mean, let me put it this way. Tesla was like the Jay-Z of electricity. It's all up here. It's all in his mind. At any given time, he's got 10 different ideas going on, can't, and they're yeah, all just imagine. cerebral. It's insane. Very envious of the ability that yes. just to not only just have the, the wherewithal to think of new ideas to that level, but then to also pursue them with the intelligence to facilitate their actualization. It's, it's so wild to me. But in the 1890s, he actually moved to Colorado Springs, an interesting location, but he wanted to move there for to more safely test larger coils and to study the conductive nature of the low pressure air found at high altitudes. This man is thinking with connects. Colorado Springs provides the necessary open space, of course, it's got the dry climate, but he also believed that this would be the perfect place to conduct his large scale Tesla coil experiments, as well as testing out his wireless electricity experiments. There in Colorado Springs, Tesla even made man-made lightning sometimes 135 feet or 41 meters long, making a racket that could be heard up to 15 miles away <laughs> or 24 kilometers if you prefer. But I'm talking like this man's literally, it's like the quintessential man up the mountain, you know? Yeah. Messing around with electricity. Doing weird doing experiments stuff. and stuff like that. The Prestige did yeah, this really dude, cool. Was no, it was it David the, Bowie? Uh, it was David Bowie. Oh. I was going to bring up the, the Prestige. Please, go, was, go was for like, it. Get in uh, there. Was that a Christopher Nolan joint? Yes. Yeah, it was. Yep. Yeah. Christian Bale. Uh, Hugh Christian Jackman. Bale, Hugh Jackman. It yes, was sir. two magicians that were going at it. And uh, essentially Hugh Jackman's character was, didn't understand how Christian Bale's character was doing a specific magic trick. Mm -hmm. And he went above and beyond and pushed magic to the limits um, and added science to it. And he went to Tesla for that. Absolutely. And it was... Damn, it's a good movie. Very good movie. Yeah. Very rewatchable. Go check it out, Task Force, because, uh, you know, if it's a Task Force approved... It's Task Force approved. <laughs> you got to get in on it. We are the movie podcast about mysteries. Listen, you have to do it. Now, as you look at this photo I'm going to give you of Tesla, what looks like reading a book or writing in his notebook while sat under just tons of electricity oozing out of his Tesla coil. I mean, this man had so much understanding of electricity. He had no this fear. This is an actual... Yes. That is an actual photo that perfectly visualizes the David Bowie kind of like magic oh, science thing. Christopher Nolan nailed that set. I mean, it's fantastic, but my favorite quote from Arthur C. Clarke, 
any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic, and I feel like so much of what Tesla was working on touches right into that. And they really leaned into it with the idea of teleportation, if you will. I'll keep yeah. it there yeah, we'll keep for it the there. prestige. Yeah. But you even saw, remember the scene where he put a light bulb in the ground? He did. And it lit up? Yeah. And then and he picked it up, up, and yeah. it wasn't connected, right. and it was lit up? Wireless electricity visualized yeah, he had on the a whole screen. field of it. Yeah, exactly. No. Exactly. As soon as you mentioned, as soon as I knew it was uh, Tesla, I was like, I want to mention the procedure yeah, going to be yeah. talked about some oh, at, yeah. at some point. Um, this is describe what you're seeing. Sorry, I gave you. A, a it photo looks of, like a uh, huge, giant wooden type of like warehouse. Mm -hmm. um, tons of coils and contraptions in the background, in the foreground, and in the background. Uh, just massive in terms of scaling on everything. Mm -hmm. In the background, you have Tesla sitting in a chair, reading a book, uh, and in the foreground, just a giant stream of electricity going from a sphere on the left side to a cylinder on the right, a vertical cylinder on the right, and you he's have your chilling. your horizontal. Yeah, he's just chilling. Like it's like it's no big thing. And it looks like Thor is just striking <laughs> the the cylinder right from from left to right, and he, it's just no big deal to him. Uh huh. And Tesla's like Iron Man, going, "Huh, interesting." Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. I'm just, just in case people are wondering, that is slightly it's it's a promotional photo. Tesla was not there when the lightning is shooting out. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He's there. Just in case people are wondering. Okay, yeah, ah, he's there. Do a doing due diligence. He's there. <laughs> Promotional photo. They took the photo with the lightning shooting out, and then they took the photo with Tesla sitting there and just composited the two. It makes sense. Yeah. Um, just peek behind the curtain, had okay. to say it. <laughs> I, I'll be honest, I fell for it. My 1890s propaganda, I'm not up on it, but I fell for it. Good okay. advertising. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, For what? Right. I don't know, but hey, I'm in. <laughs> Dang, I didn't know they were compositing stuff. Subscribe, Photo like, comment, <laughs> buy. Uh, Photoshop beta apparently was a thing back then. <laughs> Jesus. All right, so jokes aside, he was also testing wireless telegraphy, and in 1899, he claimed, so telegraphy like a telegraph. Do -do 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 -do. In 1899, he claimed to receive radio signals from extraterrestrials. In 1901, Tesla wrote to the Collier's Weekly, which was a general interest magazine, quote, the changes I noted were taking place periodically and with such a clear suggestion of number and order that they were not traceable to any cause known to me. I was familiar, of course, with such electrical disturbances as are produced by the sun, aurora borealis, and earth currents. And I was sure as I could be of any fact that these variations were due to none of these causes. We'll talk more about this in the theories discussion, but basically saying that when setting up this wireless telegraph, he started receiving a signal like the wow signal, which means it had periodic shifts in the signal that he was getting, which normally natural signals are kind of chaotic and wild and random. Human-made signals are a lot more consistent and periodic, but it had such a cadence to it that he said, it doesn't feel like natural, that any of any natural signal I know, so it must be, therefore, aliens, because who else would be working on this but me? Yeah. We'll talk more about it later, but Damn. it's very interesting. Hmm. Despite Tesla's many ideas and patents, he was not focused on business or making money and struggled to get financial support. The famous Tesla Tower, also known as Wardenclyffe Tower, was perhaps his last major project with financial backers. So JP Morgan, and I mean the JP Morgan, oh, okay. not the bank JP Morgan, right? The, the bank he initiated was interested in Tesla's idea for wireless broadcasting, and the tower was built on Long Island, New York in 1901. However, radio towers successfully transmitted information before Tesla's, so Morgan ceased backing Tesla's tower. The Tesla tower was eventually demolished in 1917. So it's just kind of like a bad timing. Yeah. He got invested into for a specific idea. Turns out someone just beat him out. Yep. But, uh... But I mean, hey, that's a gamble we're taking because Absolutely. it's not like it's something that didn't work or was a complete scam. It's just, I mean, if you if you nailed that, boy, oh boy, that's mm -hmm. to the moon. Absolutely. Yeah. 100%. It's due to these financial troubles that Tesla eventually began living in New York hotels. At this point, his physical and mental health deteriorated. I mean, he's getting older in age, though he still tried to create things and earn financial backers, basically inventing things, going out, trying to get support for it, going back and forth in that kind of cycle as society began to not only, they always kind of struggled to, to believe such a unique and brilliant mind, but at this point, it only kind of 
entered a vicious spiral, so I'll say. By this point, he was also experiencing heart problems and was experiencing fainting spells. He also kept and rehabilitated pigeons in his rooms, which led to a very messy environment. So you can imagine, yeah. this man's harboring pigeons in his hotel rooms, and he's also trying to bring financiers in and right. say, like, look at this idea. Don't mind the feathers. Right, yeah. It's a... I mean, look, at the end of the day, like, looks, first impressions, they, they mean a lot. Absolutely. You know? It's, so. I mean... That's why you go to a job interview with a button up and a, and a tie. Yeah. You know, sometimes you just got to play the game. Yep. And this man was like, listen, I just have good ideas. I don't like the game. Right. It's, it's just, it just seems so unfortunate. It's such a brilliant mind. And like, I applaud him because he just doesn't care about the business aspect of things. Mm -hmm. He just wanted to make things. Yeah. And it's unfortunate this world be cold. Right. Because like, you do have to care about the business side. Unfortunately, like can't just run off of ideas and imagination as brilliant as tesla is you have to have some kind of business aspect or angle to what you're trying to do and all i right. want to do is invent yeah it's like great we can all have free free wireless electricity that's great but how am i going to make money right yeah. yeah now i would be remiss if i didn't also kind of talk about this following thing but i need it to be said that these come from various sources this is not an actual diagnostic this is something that has been discussed, but Tesla most likely suffered from obsessive compulsive disorder most of his life, and symptoms of OCD are actually worsened by stress. This includes things like ruminating on topics and on fears, and compulsions, including actions and thoughts, to temporarily resolve the obsessions. This may be related to his painful childhood vision. Again, we're not here to diagnose, this is just kind of a yeah. discussion. During this period of financial woes, he struggled with themes involving germs and actually the number three. Uh, I'm not going to go too much into it because I'm not too well informed, but another famous quote from Tesla has to do with, and again, I'm going to ruin it if you don't mind looking it up, Christian, but it has to do with like, if you want to understand the world, you need to understand vibrational energy. And so at this point in time, a lot of people like to throw it all out as to say, well, this is all nothing because of some of the obsessive thoughts and behaviors he was having, but I think this is where you have the unfortunate conflation between someone who is unfortunately ill, but also brilliant at the same time. Yeah. And so it's hard to separate his genius inventions that are practical and those that might stretch into the realm mm -hmm. more fictional, but yeah. based in reality. You know what Which I mean? Which is unfortunate because, I mean, even nowadays, like to this day, so so many people that are on the spectrum, but are also brilliant as well. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. And just for clarification, the full quote is, if you want to find the secrets of the universe, think in terms of energy, frequency, and vibration. Which a lot of people have interpreted to mean a lot of different things, whether misused or used for other reasons, I don't know. But it's a very thought-provoking idea. And um, I think, again, I'm just talking out of my face here, but I think that has vastly preceded string theory and quantum mechanics, which has a lot to do with vibrations. To verify your fact check, string theory was invented in 1969, it looks like. Pew, pew, firing from the hip. Vaguely Ooh. accurate, they call me. <laughs> All right. So beginning in 1931, we're taking a bit of a leap forward here. On his 75th birthday, Tesla actually began having birthdays that also acted kind of as press conferences for his inventions. In 1934, he announced that he had created a weapon of mass destruction called Teleforce, which newspapers began calling a death ray. Basically just shifting it into something more colloquial that yeah. could sell those good, good papes. Yep. Interesting that his inventions went in that direction. To yeah. Uh, yeah. Like destructive because, you know, he's talking about free energy. And, yes. And, and having to do a lot. I mean, not to say that like his invention, I'm like, I don't quite know the details on it quite yet, mm -hmm. but, it, you know, sure. It could be adjacent to like electricity can be destructive is what I'm trying to say here. But I just... I don't know. I mean, like, this is getting towards the later times of his life where things are harder, things are different, both, like, financially, mentally, and physically. Yeah. But it just seems like such a turn. That's a very interesting take. Because on one hand, you're absolutely right. You know, if you have wireless electricity, very simply, and you're beaming power to something, you could concentrate it and essentially make a weapon, right? So it's kind of one idea in two forms. But I love your perspective on the idea that he's a different person now. He's older, he's had different experiences, life has had its ups and downs, mm -hmm. and so maybe the motivations are different. I never really thought about that. But George Sylvester Weyreck, who was a German writer 
who was at one of these parties, and just, um, just flag it for a second, it was a German man in the late 30s. I'll leave that with you yeah. as it mm-hmm. is. But he wrote in 1937 that Tesla had claimed, quote, My apparatus projects particles which may be relatively large or of microscopic dimensions, enabling us to convey to a small area at a great distance trillions of times more energy than is possible with rays of any kind. Many thousands of horsepower can thus be transmitted by a stream thinner than a hair so that nothing can resist. The nozzle would send concentrated beams of particles through the free air of such tremendous energy that they will bring down a fleet of 10,000 enemy airplanes at a distance of 200 miles from a defending nation's border and will cause armies to drop dead in their tracks. Well, I mean, at that point, I feel like the government would get very interested in here's all the money in the world. Give us that technology. You, Yeah. Absolutely. Or <laughs> run away in fear or yeah. simply write it off as madness. Mm. You know, and, a, and all of that happened. And also, I do want to go back. Now that I heavily mentioned the fact that we're in the late 30s and we are headed now at this point into the Second World War, a crucial moment in this man's life was the Great War, World War One. And so oh, yeah. it's very interesting that you brought up his perspective now on more defensive weapons. I mean, it's weapon of mass destruction, but I will say he mostly envisioned this as a defensive thing. In fact, he claimed that the death ray would lead to peace and end wars, especially if every country used it purely as a defensive maneuver. So it's you see the old Tesla in there wanting to build ideas, but you also see the effects of what this global... Yeah, the world around him. Y- exactly. I mean, I guess it's kind of like that with, like now with nuclear weapons, right? Mm-hmm. It's just, again... You kind of don't push another country too hard because they have nuclear weapons. Absolutely. Because even though, like, you can send them, they can send them, everything just goes to all hell. Yep. Yep. You know, you had your old Cold War situation all Mm -hmm. over again with something like this instead. So, to your point, a lot of different dispositions out there. In fact, there were no buyers except the UK and Yugoslavia both indicated that they had interest in the idea. Now, no one had actually seen his death ray, so when asked about it in 1937, Tesla claimed, quote, I have built, demonstrated, and used it. Only a little time will pass before I can give it to the world. The same year, Tesla was unfortunately hit by a car and never recovered from his injuries. Whoa. Yeah. I mean, you want to put the tinfoil hat on, right? He's shopping it out, essentially, to any buyers. Yeah, yeah. You have specific governments that are like, I'm not interested, but... There are other countries that are interested that I would not like them to have this technology. Right. Could be a formula for like, I don't know, the conspiracy is there. Oh, yeah. That maybe a government hit him with a car and and in order to, um, you know, end his life. With a And and so that way the technology doesn't get into the wrong hands or is not invented. Oh, yeah. And that leads us right into this last kind of discussion I want to have before we dive into the theories missing files, right? I'm going to leave you with that because I want to at least trickle feed you a piece of my understanding from one of the theories. And again, this is kind of getting ahead of myself, but with regard to that death ray idea, it is said, and again, this is theoretical, if not conspiratorial, it is said that before he passed away, Tesla broke down the plans to creating that death ray, i.e. pulling energy, activating the ionosphere for wireless transmission of free energy, turning it into a weapon, he broke it into four pieces and he gave them to the world powers at the time. I believe it was England, United States, Russia, and you're going to, you might have to help me, Christian, on the fourth one, but I believe it was like France or Germany because my understanding when I first heard this, I was like, well, that's three allies in Russia. But the idea was, he said, I'm going to break this plan up because in order for this amazing invention to be had, both for good and ill, we must realize world peace to actualize this plan. That uh, is just epic. That is epic. If nothing but a good story. Holy. But I hope it's true because that's... That's a wild <sighs> story. Yeah. How's it going, Task Force? It is that gap in the mystery where we get to talk to you. I get to say we this time because I'm with the boys. About what's going on. Housekeeping notes. Things of that nature. Fredo, what do we got in the store right now? You like baby hands? Yes. Of course you do. You probably want to get <laughs> Period. <laughs> and done. 
we got a we got a bean <laughs> bag. Uh, we got a baby hands is a bean bag. Uh, now oh, does yeah, it come could... with the stuffing? Because that would just be ridiculous to right. ship to you. Right. But... Imagine a five by five box <laughs> coming your way. But you can get the skin of baby <laughs> hands. Yeah. <laughs> you oh, can, hey, and then God. you can stuff it. You can <laughs> stuff and then you can hug you with all this warmth. <laughs> He's got a face, he's got two little cheeks, and his hands come out a little bit. He's also got a convenient handle if for whatever reason you you want to use him as a storage unit. Yeah. Just like as a little like yeah, pouch does, does, it, does it all. <laughs> yep. Carry your beans. So buy the skin of baby hands today. Um, also, yeah. We hunted him down. <laughs> hunted the Jeez. ghost down and, and sucked out his innards. Uh, we got a couple uh, pins, a yeah. big one, Summer Squonk. Summer Squonk. He's just, just really wrinkly and <laughs> chilling in the sun. <laughs> he, he's uh, he's lotioned up his his little wrinkly nose. Just right, yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> and then uh, we got some comfy joggers. Yes, oh my God. And the hoodie that comes and, with it? Yeah, and the hoodie. Lo and let's be honest, you ain't jogging, but you're wearing it because you could be comfy at home. Right. Or when you go out to do like a CVS run or like a Walgreens or... I, I but you have Rite Aid or whatever. Legally, I'm trying to hit all the yeah, different yeah. places that people have. But legally, you have to to actually run there to make a CVS run. You got to jog there <laughs> you in your joggers. Jog. That is part of when you buy it. Everyone needs a comfy set of some uh, joggers. Yeah, we sure. have a few other things hanging around in the store at yeah, store.roosterteeth.com. It's a great way to support us. Any gifts for your mystery lovers out there? But as always, thank you so much for indulging with us and representing us out in the world. I've seen people wear our task force logos like internationally at like hot spots. There's one person Ooh. in particular who was wearing the red web Everywhere. logo at all these places out throughout like Europe and the Mediterranean. I was like, that's so cool. Mm -hmm. Like seeing our logo in ancient Greece. I'm like, yeah, I'm sorry. Been there. Official, unofficial red web location scouter. Ooh. <laughs> She's like, yeah, this is a good spot for a new HQ. Yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. yeah. I broke ground. She just stuck a shovel in the ground. <laughs> <laughs> done. Oh, and something else we're working on is called the first program. It's kind of our Patreon model. Red Web is under the mothership known as Rooster Teeth, where they have a bunch of other shows, a bunch of other productions and podcasts and everything. But for just $5.99 a month as a first member, you get to support the podcasts and shows that you desperately love. Not only that, you also get those shows ad free and you can get them 24 hours early. So if you're a task force member, you want to support us, becoming a first member is one of the best ways to do it, especially if you want to experience all the other shows that Rooster Teeth has to offer. Not only do you get the benefit for us, you get it for every single podcast out there. I'm talking face, face jam, tales from the stinky dragon, and a bunch of other stuff that both Fredo and I have worked on. If you're interested in that, go to roosterteeth.com slash sign up. Thank you so much. And we look forward to seeing all you first members. And with that said, we've got a fantastic sponsor to talk about. This episode of Red Web is sponsored by BetterHelp Online Therapy. Boys, life can be pretty uncertain at times. And when you're at a crossroads, it can be hard to decide which direction to take. It's like standing at a fork in the road and not knowing which path to choose. What's right for you, what's right for your friends and your loved ones around you. But therapy can really help you find your way through all of that uncertainty. Therapy keeps you connected to what truly matters even when life gets challenging. It's like having a personal guide to help you navigate and move forward. I think therapy is super important for anyone to consider. No matter what your challenges are, there is a therapist designed to help you in those challenges and better help makes it super easy to find the right person for you. They have a little quiz that I really appreciate. Get on there. They'll help you find the right person. And if they're not right, it's so easy. And this is important. It's so easy to swap to somebody else at no extra cost. They're going to help you find that right person because that is a huge part of the equation. I mean, you know, everyone has stress. No one's immune to stress. Absolutely. And then on top of that, it's like, it's, even regardless, it's always good to vent to someone that's not like your family, your right. significant other, your Offload friends, that just like an outside perspective. And then, so that's why therapy is so great and it works for so many people. But then also it's just like, okay, I want to go to therapy. Uh, what do I do now? <laughs> and so to have a place where you can go and it's just like a one-stop place where you can like, they can guide you through to mm -hmm. someone that's perfect for you. It's cool. Absolutely. To know that there, there are so many specialties, you know, no matter what type of mental health struggle you're having, there is somebody who knows exactly like what that is and knows how to talk to you about it. That oh my is something. God. And how refreshing is it to have somebody goes, validates that, that feeling exactly. you have yeah. and also helps you disarm it. Exactly. It's so important. And if you're thinking about starting therapy, you should give BetterHelp a try. It's a convenient and flexible option because it's entirely online. They're going to help fit your schedule no matter what you're up to. So 
Let BetterHelp be your map on this journey by visiting betterhelp.com slash redweb today. You're going to get 10% off your first month. Once again, that's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash redweb. With that said, let's get right back into the mystery. All right, so Christian, as you look that up and hopefully you can find it, Let's talk about those missing files and then get into those theories. So on January 7th, 1943, Tesla passed away in room 3327 of the Hotel New Yorker alone at the age of 86. Now, reminder, he was hit by that car in 37. He didn't really recover from the injuries, but he didn't pass away right away. It was another six years before his passing. Whoa, so he was just, was he like bedridden? That's a very good question. I honestly don't know that. Christian, I know you uh, only have one mind and two hands, but do we know... Tesla's physical state in those later years? I know he never recovered, but did that mean he was bedridden? Was he in a wheelchair or was he able to kind of walk, but with great effort kind of thing? That is a good question. Let me see. I'll I'll let you kind of do your thing as we continue, but thank you very much. So his body was found, coming back to his passing at the age of 86, his body was found by hotel staff and the cause of death was determined to be coronary thrombosis, a blood clot in the heart. Just two days after his death, the FBI's Office of Alien Property Custodian raided the hotel room and seized many of Tesla's documents and notes. This office was charged with seizing property belonging to enemies of the United States during World War I and World War II. And just to clarify, because I did say alien, I don't mean extraterrestrial. I mean alien with reference to the country's borders. Yeah, Yeah, exactly. Tesla was an American citizen, but he could have had property or plans that could be useful to Germany, right? Also, the fact that you had other countries kind of interested in his ideas, they said better safe than sorry, especially since this was during World War II. And in their opinion, it warranted treating him and his documents like a security threat. That's what that's the how they activated the power to remove it all. Mm. Mm-hmm. There it is. Jumping in to address the question about uh, the after effects of being hit by the vehicle. It looks like he broke some ribs and injured his back, though he refused to see a doctor. Seems like he recovered for the most part, but he did have lifelong pain following Okay. That. So debilitating pain that would otherwise heavily impact. I mean, he he worked on a lot of his own inventions, yeah. constructing and building and putting together. So that would heavily impede his ability to perform, especially at the age of 80 when that happened. Jesus. Right. So coming back to Tesla's papers, MIT engineer Dr. John G. Trump was assigned to study them. He concluded that there was no new science contained in them and that they were, quote, primarily of a speculative, philosophical, and promotional character. This interesting fact was actually Donald Trump's uncle. Oh. Yeah. But we'll talk more about this doctor and his opinion a little bit more in the theories discussion in just a bit. Tesla's nephew was to receive his estate, and in 1952, so almost a decade later, the FBI sent him about 60 of the original 80 trunks that they had seized from Tesla's hotel room, meaning that 20 trunks worth of documents, information, and papers were missing Mm -hmm. somewhere. Either a security threat or they were like, oh, this would be very useful to the government. Absolutely. And And now you start to see the groundwork we're laying with these theories that because there's holes, it leads to some maybe some credence to some of the wild ideas that he was proposing. Does that mean that they were valid and that's why the papers were taken? Yeah. Is it a conflation of, of situation? Oh, were they lost? Oh, man, because, like, if if it meant nothing and it was nothing, then why then wouldn't why you just give it back? It? Because you did give stuff back. Mm-hmm. Nefarious. Now, despite the supposed lack of content in these papers, the FBI held on to them until 2016. I mean, aside from giving them to the nephew, they had them until 2016, where they were finally released if you will, declassified as a result of the Freedom of Information Act request. Within these released papers, information is blacked out, which means that the U.S. government could still be working with Tesla's ideas or his various technologies, could be wanting to hide things. Again, it just provides more groundwork for maybe he's right. Yeah. We don't know. Some believe that many of his research papers are still missing and that even bigger and more grandiose ideas are now being held kind of government secret. We also don't know, like, the uh, inventions and technology we have today is it because of those papers is it inspired great because of an amazing the, thought you know what i mean like you don't know yeah at this point i mean we're no talking idea. now we got a congressional hearing about uaps and ufos and like 
We're talking about, well, we've reverse engineered alien technology. What if we're just trickle releasing Tesla's ideas? Yeah. What about that? Yeah. <laughs> what a thought. <laughs> what a thought. A man from the mid 1800s. We're just trickling that out almost yeah, 200 so, years later. So far ahead of the curve. Right. Now that would almost be stranger to me than extraterrestrials. Why? Like, or or maybe not stranger, but more pleasing. I don't know that Maybe that we that, that humans are capable of such brilliance. We don't have to have it be aliens, right. you know. And also, it's just like, man, just imagine if, you, if someone just like backed this man to mm. to whatever extent, right? Or right. if he'd had just a little bit more hunger for that dollar, yeah, or just yeah. you know. But yeah, it's it's an interesting thought. I'm surprised like the government didn't just pick him up and we were just like, look, make things. Sure, right? You know, and like. Sure. You purely just want to make stuff. Okay. We will allow you to do so. But obviously, like, it's, we own that stuff. Right. Make things. We own it. We'll make sure you get a little bit of money. Right. So, so I'm just surprised, like, no government would just, like, do that. Yeah. I don't know, man. It is wild. Now, with regards to Tesla's files, there are many out there who say that they may have never existed. And their backing for that is that so much of what he did, so much of his planning and ideation was his imagination. Exactly. You gestured to your temple. I mean, he had no need for diagrams. He was so visually inclined, especially once he learned to use that visions that he had, those visions as a tool. Then he could kind of like work with almost like that minority report hologram or like Tony Stark moving things around in his mind just to kind of visualize. That is incredible. But, I think um, to, to some extent, though, he did write things down. Oh, you have to believe it. For sure. Yeah. Especially if he's trying to convince individuals to step in and either back it or buy into it or yeah. you know, whatever. Before we get to the theories, I finally found some info on your 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 death ray country's uh -huh, note. Uh -huh. It sounds like what you what you said may have not been the truth. The only thing That's I can find... fine. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing I can find is that Tesla sent in what is described as an elaborate technical paper, which included diagrams okay. to several allied nations, which were the U.S., Canada, England, France, the Soviet Union, and Yugoslavia. And it is said that a couple years later, the Soviet Union did test some part of this weapon design plan and gave him a check for it, but that's the only other thing I can find. Okay, so it was oh. definitely maybe... One of those... Well, someone uh, took it and made a grand yeah, story out of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it was originated in some truth. It had a footing in the truth. Yeah. But then, yeah. Okay. No, I appreciate that fact check. So now let's discuss these missing files and the many stories and theories that surround what Tesla may have been up to in his later days. It is theorized that these possible missing files could contain information on the death ray, aliens, and any number of advanced technologies, particularly wireless electricity. So let's break it down each one at a time and talk about them. Despite the world never getting to see Tesla's death ray, there are theories that it may have been out there somewhere, or at least the plans for it exist somewhere to this day. Because the FBI sent only 60 of the 80 trunks, it could be that it is sitting now with the FBI and the U.S. government. In the declassified files, the FBI considered Tesla's nephew a threat since he was a Yugoslav ambassador to the United States, and they even considered arresting him at the time. This may be the reason that not all the files were given to him as the FBI was afraid that he would give Tesla's documents to any of the various United States enemies out there. So mm -hmm. there's a more reasonable answer, perhaps, to the otherwise fantastic they're harboring uh, technologies that yeah. are important. It could be that and or that they simply weren't sure of the relations of the nephew and what that could mean if they gave it all back. You of know course, I mean? it's complicated in that of manner. Of course. Of course. Yeah. So after World War II, interest in particle weapons led to copies of Tesla's papers being sent to Wright-Patterson Air Force Base in Dayton, Ohio. Brigadier General L.C. Craigie led Project Nick using these papers, but the content of the project is unknown and the copies of Tesla's papers went missing. There you have it, folks. Another oh, set of missing documents. Man. What have we talked about on this podcast? We've got missing tablets. we got missing heads and skulls. We've got missing papers. All sorts of missing it's things. The number of things that go missing. Oh. Anything and everything can go missing. Right. I feel like one day... There will be an alien crash, and it will be like, boom, we've got aliens. Mm -hmm. da, 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 da. Here's an alien uh, body or whatever. Yeah. Shipped it missing. 
<laughs> you know what I mean? Right, like, right. It's just, well, what do you, I just slapped the, you know, I slapped the postage stamp on it, <laughs> sent it off. Right. And it's just, you it's know, just really, it looks like that. Sent it off. <laughs> sent it off. It's like that men in black, you know, uh, UFO <laughs> wedged into a bug. <laughs> truck, yeah. You know what I'm saying? But it's just missing. Just like, I don't know. Missing. Fell between the couch cushions. Yeah. I just, man, it is. Do you think oh, that's happened wow. already though? Do you think that's happened? Do you think that's I, happened? I, I'm sure there's been like maybe pieces of things that have gone missing that yeah. the government's like, we need to track this down ASAP. I think for the most part, it's like convoy. Like if it's that important, that rare, that sought after, mm -hmm. there's like five vehicles transporting that thing. Well, I mean, we've done a disappearance month before on this podcast. And so we've seen how people, armies, and various other physical things can all go disappeared. So could you imagine a convoy going, all right, guys, let's keep an eye on this thing. We got drones in the sky. We got drones on the drones watching the, the thing. And you got a semi-truck with a UFO draped in a nice cloth mm -hmm. fluttering down. You got like 15 Humvees on either side and yeah. a couple of unmarked cars. Every, whoosh, 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 well, all of it's gone. Well, the, all it, disappears. Well, yeah. The issue is you put it in a, in a semi. Oh. So that's that's a prime target for a bunch of like mm. Hondas with deep tints to roll oh, up. Oh, okay. With like <laughs> e underlying LEDs. Right, right, right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. And then maybe, <laughs> maybe someone, uh, someone the name Dominic Toretto <laughs> leading the pack yeah, yeah, yeah. to steal, uh -huh. like, okay, that sounds good. Steal said <laughs> items for, you know, a covert part of the right. government. I'm Dang. just, I'm just saying. I mean, you're just you spitballing. You did it to yourselves. You're just spitballing, but that sounds like a good plan. I think, I hope somebody's yeah. writing that down because yeah. I've never heard Big of a, time spitball. Never, never heard of a plan like that before, but honestly, honestly, I don't know if a plan could like come together like that without family. That's true. And that's yeah. just instinct. It'd have right to there. be a group of people who yeah. consider themselves not only friends, but family. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> Well, you know, if they need a backup, let me just say, let's get three Mini Coopers decked <laughs> out with weight-bearing technologies that can fit in and out of a nice French sewer system. <laughs> We're just meshing all of it together. Just in case maybe. Plan A Isn't fails. An Italian job? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right. Come and let's bring us back down to earth real quick, right next to that semi. Now, according to Arthur Mark Cipher, Craigie was among many who disagreed with Dr. Trump's opinions on Tesla's ideas. From Cypher's biography on Tesla, he said, quote, Craigie said, there's something to this. The particle beam weapon is real. Basically opening the door to say there is reasonable room for doubt that Dr. Trump, while looking at this, might have either A, not fully understood, might not have believed it and thrown it out, or for whatever reason, didn't believe the papers, whereas this person in particular is saying, I think that there is something here. So now there's room for reasonable doubt that these mysterious, i.e. lost papers, actually have more than meets the eye. So inspired by Tesla's ideas and concerned that foreign countries were working on one, the US started to work on their own death ray during the Cold War. As you can imagine, we talked about that earlier. This was a part of the famously nicknamed Star Wars program. This project could explain why some of the files were missing, since they were actively being researched and developed, at least at a theoretical level, with the U.S. government. According to the documents released by the FBI in 2016, Vice President Henry Wallace discussed, quote, the effects of Tesla, particularly those dealing with the wireless transmission of electrical energy and the, quote, death ray. And he was discussing this with advisors during his term alongside Franklin D. Roosevelt. Some believe that Tesla's testing of the death ray caused the Tunguska event in 1908. We did a whole episode on that, but very yeah. briefly, it was an unexplained explosion, I believe it was in Siberia, out in Russia, that flattened thousands of trees without leaving behind any debris. Yeah. It was a giant explosion, a circular impact where from a central point, trees were flattened outward. Incredible episode, incredible topic. Please go check it out. But without any physical evidence, it's hard to believe that the death ray ever actually existed. And the tower, as I mentioned, was destroyed in 1917, so there it is. Now here's another one. This one's shorter, but the earthquake generator. I've heard about this one. It is another, at least, if nothing else, Tesla created some really fantastic stories, but I actually, I believe this one. In 1935, at one of his birthday parties, Tesla claimed that his oscillator caused an earthquake in New York City in 1898. The oscillator is essentially a small steam power generator and could create multiple frequencies. According to reporter Alan L. Benson, 
Tesla searched for a building mid-construction to attach the oscillator to. When he did, the building is said to have creaked and moved back and forth, leading construction workers to believe that there was actually an earthquake going on. Now, there are multiple versions of this story that exist, including that the oscillator affected several buildings all at once. Tesla believed that not only could it create these shakes that felt like earthquakes, but could also stop earthquakes by matching the frequency of one and probably like trying to cancel it out. Interesting. Yeah. So wait, originally the theory is like he went to a construction site and just slapped this thing on? The, yeah, the theory is that he created, and this is a less fantastic version of the story because yeah. I just wanted to be straightforward, but the idea was this device was a handheld device that could match the so-called resonant frequency of any item. A resonant frequency is basically, everything kind of has vibrations. Yep. When you knock on a table or a glass window or whatever, let's use a window, that's perfect. It, it has like a ding, it has a sound. And when it, you've ever seen those opera singers, Ooh, and then the glass breaks, yeah. that's because they're reaching the resonant frequency of the glass. And when you match the frequency, imagine like you're on a swing, a metaphor on metaphor here, but yeah. like imagine you're swinging. At the apex of your swing, if I push you, I'm going to add the most effective momentum to you. If I push you at the bottom of the swing, it wouldn't be as effective or it would be blocked out by you swinging at me. Mm -hmm. But if I push at the apex, you're going to go higher and higher. And that's the most efficient thing you can do. And so if you hit the resonant frequency of a structure, you're adding to its natural frequency yeah. and pushing it at the apex of that swing to the point where now even a small device could make a full building shake, if not crumble. And uh, I think there's other anecdotal stories like an army of men marching across a bridge and they happen to be marching at the resonant frequency of the bridge and it caused the bridge to kind of shake and collapse. Oh. But that's the idea, is that yeah. he had a pocket-sized earthquake machine, essentially. Well, that's... S something so small could do something so big. That's uh, wild. Yeah. And so he's like, maybe this could stop earthquakes, but also cause them. <laughs> There's like the double-edged sword to his Right, inventions. and then you use it and you stall the Earth's core, and then we gotta go... <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm, go on. Then you gotta, you know, then we gotta get a team of geologists to go <laughs> down the Earth's core uh -huh, and, uh -huh. and un un unstall it with a <laughs> bunch of seismic charges. Right, right. Yeah. <laughs> it's just a situation you don't want to be, like, you don't want to put the world in. Right, right, right. You don't want to stop that core. You want to get it going. Mm -hmm. Now, whether or not the oscillator could actually cause or stop earthquakes is obviously unknown. That's why we're talking about it here. But we also don't know if it existed. But again, it is just one of those theoretical devices that has lasted the test of time from Tesla. And we may never know if all of his papers don't get found or at least declassified the truth of the matter. Moving on now, this isn't the last one, but we are going to talk about it. Aliens! Others believe that Tesla may have successfully contacted aliens... I'm going to let you breathe on that for a little bit, because remember when we talked about wireless telegraphy, he's like getting signals that are pretty consistent. What? Yeah, I'm going to let you hold on to that for a second before I ruin your parade, our believers out there. And uh, not only that he contacted these aliens, but that also perhaps his work in the study of extraterrestrial communication could be contained in these missing files. Not saying that he like learned from aliens, but the idea that he contacted them were also of the 20 trunks hidden away by the government. So Tesla claimed that he heard the letter S in Morse code. He was saying that he was getting the letter S consistently in Morse code. However, yes, that is an intelligent signal. He was not wrong to interpret it as an intelligent signal. However, he did not know that a man by the name of Guglielmo Marconi was broadcasting this very signal as he was testing radio between England and France. So he was testing radio in Europe. Tesla's over here in Long Island inadvertently picks up these these signals and goes oh, oh my gosh but in a non-global world he right. didn't really know yeah yeah I didn't think about that mm -hmm. it was just two inventors just kind of crossing paths yep kind of inventing similar wireless forms of communication at the same time so it's unknown for sure if tesla picked up on marconi's broadcast but it's very likely leaving very little room in this theory to go the distance as far as aliens are concerned unfortunately still gotta believe in them and i do yeah but I don't think he interfaced with aliens right now. Moving on now to the last theory, the idea of free energy. Some believe that Tesla was murdered, and you kind of talked about that earlier, because he was a proponent of free energy. Just musing on that for a second, you know, obviously JP Morgan wanted to be involved and people want to make money. They want to invest in stuff. And if you come up with such an earth shattering idea as free power for all, all the time, anywhere, you're going to disrupt a lot of established industries. 
I mean, I mean, yeah. I mean, think think like if we were to sit here and invent like a sustainable food source, right? And that we could mass produce and it costs us nothing. So we're able to solve world hunger. You, I mean, you have no idea like so in the, green. The, the the people that would come after you, right? I mean, like right. you could have like Kellogg's coming after us, right? Because they don't, <laughs> you, don't you know what I mean? All these like big companies and whatnot. Yeah. And this is because like you're destroying their entire business. Absolutely. For sure. And they would try to put the kibosh on you, try to do this and that to tarnish your reputation or try to say, no, it's not real science, you know, whatever it could be. Yeah. And we've seen many ex examples of that over the many years. Yeah. But um, And send the Keebler elf to get us. Absolutely. Like, Wait, what? He's right. real? And they go, yeah, he's real. <laughs> <laughs> give us the recipe. <laughs> <laughs> so I think where this idea kind of began not only was it the wireless transmission of power that Tesla was very loud about and was very excited to talk about, but also the idea that we've talked about now to death, which is the fact that he was not business-minded, he was not money-minded, he was idea-minded. And so I think that that kind of helps fuel this theory. Now, in particular, he was the first individual to identify uh, radiant energy, the energy that is transferred by electromagnetic radiation. It's a form of energy that comes in waves and can move through empty space, including various types of electromagnetic radiation, such as visible light, radio waves, microwaves, infrared radiation, ultraviolet radiation, x-rays, and gamma rays, to say most of them, actually. So those are all things that we know and take for granted now these days, but I just wanted to pause for a second to once again just let his brilliance wash over me, <laughs> because to identify a whole new kind of sector of radiation is, or energy, I should say, is, is wild. Now, he believed that with the Tesla Tower, the Earth itself could be a conduit for transmitting unlimited energy, and some believe the construction was stopped because it could create that free energy that we're talking about. However, Tesla's goals were not necessarily to make energy free or electricity free with the tower, but to transmit it wirelessly via radio waves. What do you think? This whole month is just people that are just absolutely on a different level. Widely different levels. That's we the, think we know them too. Yeah. You know, these the are thing. names we recognize, and then you start looking closer and you go, oh, that's probably why you're so well known. Yeah. Yeah. That's, man, this has been a fascinating month. Oh, yeah. It's been a great month with like so many different people. I'm glad like Tesla's one of them mm -hmm. because it's just, I don't know, you know, I know of him. And then, you know, you have the movie version and stuff like the prestige, whatnot. And so it's cool to actually see. A little sad, though. A little sad. A little sad. Yeah. Yeah. In closing, Nikola Tesla was an unimpeachably brilliant inventor who was born, obviously, out of his time. His ideas vastly preceded common understanding and his unique perspective of the world was misunderstood by many, leading to gaps in our knowledge of the man himself. These gaps have been ripe for theories and stories, but we may never know the full scope of what Tesla was working on, leaving us with many unanswered questions. Task Force, Fredo, Christian, I'd be very curious to know your last minute thoughts here. Do you believe Tesla made contact with extraterrestrials? Do you believe his inventions are still hidden among the world governments? Do you believe that he had other inventions even more fantastic than those we discussed? Perhaps we as humans will find out in the many years to come, but this has been our episode on Nikola Tesla. I don't think he communicated with aliens. I don't think that his technology is hidden away. I can see that his writings and technology has inspired things that we use today. 100%. I could see that. I agree with that a thousand percent. I think the most fantastic version of what you just said that I would kind of want to believe to build on that is that maybe there are ideas out there that the government thought were too futuristic that we weren't ready for, or whether they believe them or not, they just said, let's just hold on to these for a rainy day in case. Yeah. And that maybe some of the fantastic things that the military and government of like entities have developed over these years and slowly released, whether it be stealth, supersonic flight, high altitude, space flight, all that good stuff. Maybe some of that had a footing in an earth-based direction, which is a man like Nikola Tesla or many other brilliant minds. I love aliens. I would love the fact that we would be reverse engineering alien ideas and stuff. And I still want that on the table, but I also love the idea of a much more pragmatic direction. Yeah, I don't know if I'd confidently say I believe that he has inven inventions hidden away in the government, but it's also a situation where if we were to learn that there have been more fantastical concepts of his that 
to your point, yeah, the government has extrapolated and built something out of. I wouldn't be surprised, but I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't at the same time be like, if I know for a fact yeah. there's stuff hidden away. It's yeah. just like I could see it, mm-hmm. but no, I don't think he's made contact with extraterrestrials. Yeah, I think that's been. I think it was a debunked. Uh, yeah, coincidental, it's interesting cool. factoid. Yeah. Very cool Very coincidence. Cool. Yeah. I mean, you, uh, like see, obviously, aliens is a part of a lot of yeah. theories, but it's I'm always interested in seeing how it ties in. Yeah, it reminds me of that kind of telescope, if you can even call it that. It was like this giant listening device that was constantly picking up a white noise in the background and they were just like, well, what is this? We're trying to listen and look into deep space and they actually realized they were picking up the cosmic microwave background and they had no idea. It's just like, I love the idea that sometimes brilliant minds stumble into things and it in this moment was just two brilliant minds doing something kind of for the first time and one picked up the other and so they had no other solution other than saying, Oh my God, this has to be intelligent life from elsewhere because I'm the one doing this. Anyway. Well, also, be like, you're <laughs> inventing something, right? Especially if you're inventing something that's like new or never been done before. Mm-hmm. You have no idea. Yeah. Like how it's actually going to affect every other part of the world. Yeah. Like um, uh, the the chemical that's in like Rogaine or like, uh, like you know, growing hair. Uh-huh. That was originally uh, like... A liquid that was meant to like treat skin conditions, hmm. but when they put it on patients, they they start growing hair oh. out of these spots, and so they're like, "Oh, we can use we could repurpose this as like growth hormones for the scalp for right. people that are balding, etc." That's right. Wild. So you just don't know, like you you. There's so many things that we have in our day to day that were originally intended to be something else, but just so happen to function or react in a specific way Mm -hmm. and so now they're repurposed for what they do you're toiling away in the kitchen you're hacking up some beef and you're saying i'm making Mm -hmm. a petite filet and you and then you put it on you put it on the dish you put it on the dish you turn around and it's actually a fettuccine alfredo you just you know my favorite example of what you're talking about alfredo you know the original purpose behind chainsaws no is to assist with childbirth yeah that was their oh, initial, yeah. oh my was the God, initial conception. I, to be fair, it wasn't. <laughs> it, it was. It was like a similar like blade yeah. that was manual, but also, woof. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> and on that bombshell. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Christian. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> the thanks more for joining you know. this task force. Yeah, Y'all are beautiful. We See you right you. back here next week for another person of intrigue.